The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. All right, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to look at this German DAX here this morning. Uh, this is a very clear Gartley pattern, folks. Seems to be a lot of strength in here, much like we're seeing here in our market. This uh, looks like we're going to be going up to, uh, over the weekend. Maybe we'll have some good news coming out of the G20 summit. That's a coin flip, of course, but uh, that's what the chart's telling us. Uh, if you'll remember, let, let's go on to do these others before we get into what we did last week. Let's take a look here at the uh, FTSE. You'll see the FTSE is uh, not nearly as bullish as the DAX. It's still bullish, but not nearly as bullish as the DAX. Uh, that could be the turmoil that's going on because of Brexit. Who knows what that could be. Uh, the other one that's interesting here is the uh, German Bund. Uh, we've got what I think is a really big top happening here in this bond market, but it's still early. But uh, this is what we're looking at here this morning. Folks, remember, one of the things that I was watching this week was the fact that uh, we had a really strong probability of the market being down the first, the last week of June. And uh, we are still 10 handles below where we were uh, last Friday, but, uh, you know, we haven't even closed yet and we're still moving higher. So we're down about 100 Dow points. So it's a down week so far. And the way it's going today, it looks like it's going to close on the upside. I mean, it's still a little early. But uh, that that uh, idea that I had was, uh, you know, we we're going to be down all week long. And that hasn't happened. And so even though the statistic might be positive, there's going to be very little profit in that. If you're in that trade, I would put your stop at break even. And uh, which is about 100 points away from where we are now in the uh, Dow Jones uh, industrial average and take a look at that because I don't see anything else to do. Like when you when you don't if you don't know exactly what to do, don't do anything. So make sure you have your stop in and or get out of the trade. One of the two. I prefer to put the stop in because, you know, we are still, I think, in the triple topping formation in the stocks. But we could have one more jab up whether that's going to be happy ha happening or not. Uh, I don't know what that means, Maria. Very binary over the weekend. You got to speak English, honey. I'm a little old boy from Terre Haute, Indiana. I don't understand those big words. You know, that's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, up or down. There you go. See, now I, there you go. The fellow there explained it to me. Thank you very much, Maria. I understand up or down. That binary, that gets the old cowboy confused. I saw something yesterday, folks, that I had not seen before that really blew me away, and that was the fact that uh, someone showed me Vedic mathematics, and uh, I was literally uh, astonished to see how it's done. I mean, the way that the example, oh, boy. Uh, the example that they gave me was um, multiplying 34 times 11. And uh, the way the Vedic mathemat mathematics do it, you take three, well, two numbers, three and four is seven, and you put the uh, seven in the middle, it comes up to 374. I mean, it was done in a matter of seconds. I couldn't believe it. And it was also done with a uh, very good bill. It was uh, 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 done with uh, square roots, too. And I, I, I never, it was really, I had never seen it before. I, I'm not going to look into it because it's over my pay grade, but. It was really, really amazing how easy it was compared to what we do. I mean, it was uh, it was quite a bit uh, different. So anyway, my father happened to be extremely good with numbers and uh, word puzzles. Uh, he could do those crossword puzzles, the most difficult ones, in a matter of minutes. He never had any trouble. He never went past the fifth grade either. So uh, anyway, let's move on to something else here that we want to talk about. We have a grain report today, folks. It's going to be a big one. Uh, Rich Anderson will be our guest here at the half hour. And what we're going to do is uh, ask him some questions of what he's thinking, of what we're looking at. Uh, I did some videos last night on the soybeans and stuff. I did one on corn the night before, but 
there's some buying opportunities in here if we get a negative report, in my opinion, because it's not going to be able to have a bumper crop in corn this year because some of it's still not planted. It's uh, it's just really a difficult situation. Okay. Okay. He's uh, no, but yes, Steve. My 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 father was an avid reader. Yes, he was. He and uh, he could read and he he could speak three or four languages. So. Uh, uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, he used to do the cal – well, I don't want to hear my background. Let's move on here to something else here that we want to watch. Uh, the uh, Russell had been the weakest, and now it's turned around and uh, become the strongest. So that's the main thing. Now, the other thing that we've been watching all week long has been the notes and the bonds. And uh, we are still up at this same area. We've been here now for three weeks, folks. And, again, what you're looking at here is that you're looking at a uh, – a situation where we have a dropping in open interest. Now, we haven't had any drops yesterday, but there was an increase was uh, on a 3.6 million open interest. The open interest increased by 6,000, so uh, that or 8,000. That was really not very much, so that's it. Um, I don't know if you folks can hear me or not. Marshall says, oh, it's back. Okay, good, Marshall. Good to have you back. So, all right, let's move on to the... Uh, to the next one. The uh, U.S. dollar is still under some pressure here. The euro is still rallying. Uh, we're up near that. We're, we're approaching that 114 level. If we can close above the 115 level in the euro, that's going to be a very, very important spot, folks. Here's here's the, the chart on this. You'll be able to see why. Uh, this is the one from uh, fact is, you can see it's gone vi virtually nowhere this week. We're trading a tiny bit higher. We're, we're trading 15 pips higher than we were last Friday, so nothing's really happening. So this is nothing more than an inside week in the euro. So it's really quite, uh, uh, you know, quite passive, I guess. If the, is that a good word, Maria? Passive? I don't know. Sounds pretty good. Anyway, but it, it's quiet no matter what. So that's uh, what we'll keep a, keep an eye on this to see what's. Uh, What's going on with it? Okay, let's move on uh, to another one that I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, someone's asking a question about the uh, Apple and the gentleman that is the chief designer. I don't know anything about it. I have no idea what that fundamental is. Uh, it'll be it'll be reflected in the Apple stock if Apple is down. They don't like the guy to leave, and I don't know. I, I don't know anything about that stuff. We we already looked at the Apple several times, folks. It doesn't look. Uh, it certainly does not look very bearish. You know, we've uh, we've looked at it uh, three or four different ways, and uh, I'll just bring it up here to see it because I, I follow those Fang stocks because they they do have a very interesting uh, you know patterns as you go through. And Google is the least uh, least bullish of all the fang stocks but if we take a look here at apple you can see here we've been up at this uh, 199 level i i just saw a trade here across the screen here on the tv at 199 and change and uh that's the 61 percent retracement again so that's really not done very much and we'll be able to see if it's going to to proceed uh, that's it so we'll see whether that's going to be uh, someone's uh okay let's move on to uh yeah, 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, folks, I'm going to switch gears here a little bit and talk about the gold market. Uh, we made that top up there around 1441 uh, back on the 24th. That was Sunday night. Uh, we then broke down, uh, you know, $34 down to the 1401 level. We rallied up last night to the 61% retracement there at 1428 to the tick. It was uh, spot on, exactly 61% retracement. Now we backed off to 1414 where we're trading right now. That looks like, folks, that we're making an ABCD structure here uh, in the gold. We haven't had one in 10 days. So we're due for one. And if we take that and measure it, it's going to come down to that really nice area down about another $45 at 1377 So keep a very, very close eye on that. That might be something that would be, you know, really interesting to look at. Silver is still acting poorly. Um, it, you know, looked like it had a chance, but it just doesn't want to move yet. So I believe we've got one more. Uh, correction coming here in the gold and then we're going to really see you know what it's got because if we get below 1350 there's trouble in river city in gold because that number that we had up there at that 1442 you know we talked about that earlier in the week when we had that that really cool chart from the uh, across the pond over on the uh, gold market with uh, the wd gan and let's just get it up here so we can take a quick look at it You'll see here, this is nothing more going back to two, a weekly chart. And you can see the ABCD structure. We went right up there. You can see that high, 1439.31. That was spot gold. The August got to 1441. One second, please. Okay, folks. Uh, and there was another ABCD. If you look at the time between October of last year and the April, that's also in there. Uh, we didn't mark that up because it was too easy to uh, or too messy, and I didn't want to do that. But there's a possibility that 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 could be a major top here in the gold market. And when you add to the fact that platinum looks so doggone bad, and silver looks even worse. Well, nothing looks worse than platinum, but silver looks bad. Also, this could be a major top up here uh, in the uh, in this metal. I don't know yet. You know, I. I got part of the move. I got about $70 of it, but I left $70 on the table, which is one of those fears. I don't have that fear of missing out, folks. I just move on to the next trade, and 
you know, try to not uh, to not worry about it. And I, you know, those fears that we like the one fear of being wrong. Oh my gosh, you're wrong so much in this business. You know, you just do it, and what else you can do? Uh, you know, it's really amazing to see, you know, how these things uh, actually work. Uh, it's just really truly amazing to uh, watch it unfold. Um, today, with this grain report, we posted the uh, charts on these. Uh, Commodity several times. I think the key one uh, that everybody's watching, of course, is the Christmas corn. And I think we'll bring that up to let you folks uh, take a look at it. This would be the worst case scenario in corn. Uh, but this would be almost down the limit if it were coming in that uh, hold, hold up here. We'll be able to see, get this up here so we can take a look at it. I, I'm looking for around 1446 to 1440. Uh, the 382 comes in at. Uh, uh, 432. That would be down 20. That would be down just about the limit. I think it's a 30 cent limit in corn, and uh, there's a possibility that that could happen. But the way this thing is looking, folks, uh, I, I don't know. And I, you know, look at the hog. Look what they did to the hogs. You know, uh, you know, that's it. Oh, the, Ruby's asking, when do you lose those fears? You know, Ruby, it's it's a matter of you really you you have to you have to approach the market with a carefree state of mind. You really do. You just literally don't care. And and you always, you know, when you go into a trade, you should just figure that you're going to lose. And the the reason that that's not not that you're not thinking positive, but the reason for that is that you are already accepted the loss. So no matter what happens, you're not you don't have any expectations. Look at look what happened to me this week. I mean, I saw an absolute beautiful trade set up that's supposed to go down this week. It looked really good on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. The market came back, and those expectations they 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 drag on you. They really do. So if you if you really go through it, then that's what you're looking at. Humility is definitely in there, TB. You flat got that right. But uh, no, the, just uh, just take the expectation that you're going to lose and then move on because you have to focus on your on your losses. Profits will take care of themselves. They really will, and uh, that's the key to uh, looking at these things. So, you know, when you when you bought the gold down there at uh, 1276 and it rallied up to uh, 1340, it looked great. And then what what did I do? I missed the last. Uh, well, there's a hundred dollars I missed. It wasn't seventy dollars. So, that happens. But uh, that's nearly what I did. I worked here in this office with Mark Douglas for three years as he was writing the book. Uh, trading in the zone and uh, we will see uh, folks I, I am going to have to take a break here Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. 
Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Rich Anderson on the line. Rich, are you there? You bet. Hi, Larry. Hi, Rich. Listen, uh, Rich, we've got this uh, crop report today. You want to tell the folks when it comes out and what's it all about and what they're expecting? Sure. Um, well, it's in a simple. It comes out at noon Eastern time, eleven o'clock Central time. It's going to have the acres for corn and beans is the big numbers, and then it'll have the stocks. These stocks numbers won't vary very much from the last report. The acres numbers. You know, they'll maybe be unchanged, uh, slightly up on beans and, and down two to three million acres, <clears throat> excuse me, two to three million acres on, on corn. The people will take these numbers and look at them for a second or two, and then they'll be focused on, you know, on the trade dispute and stuff like that, because these were done with surveys as of June 1st, about <clears throat> and there was so much rain after that that, the numbers aren't very accurate. The first accurate numbers we'll have on the acreage will probably be in August. So even if they bring it down to five to six million acres, the traders will generally expect there'll be eight million acres. And so then we're going to be focused on what's the weather for the next 10 to 15 days. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is does the market close higher or lower tonight after this report? Just like mm -hmm. last night, we had a, a negative um, hog pig crop report showing a lot more hogs than what the uh, traders had expected. We had one of those last year in February, a negative hog report, and the market went straight up from there. So it, I try not to get too tied up in the numbers. I want to see how does the market react, because that's, that's the true facts. You know, is, Are the traders willing to put their money on the table and take it one way or the other after the report, after the numbers are out? But in the first five minutes, you've got – the national numbers, then you got the, the world numbers, and that's why you see things pop one way and then pop the other. Yeah, trade what you see, not what you hear. <laughs> that's for sure. What's, uh, Rich, what's, I don't know, uh, it looks like we're scheduled for a, a commercial right now, but I don't hear anything. So, uh, Rich, what are you seeing about the, uh, the hogs? They've had a, uh, you know, a big drop, and uh, now they look like they're holding you. Do you think that this, uh, this negative report will be the thing that turns the market? Well, you know, a year ago in February, it was a negative report, and that's what turned the market. So we're, we're down here this morning. We're down 60, 70 points on the uh, June, uh, of June 20 hogs. The Octobers uh, are 70, 67. They're down about a buck. You know, the July hogs at 72, 75 are down about a buck, a little over a buck. This mm -hmm. this could easily be it. I mean, 
the conditions exist for a change in trends. You've had a market that's gone straight down, and now you have negative news. If the market all of a sudden finds some support, some buyers, and manages to close higher today, the lows are likely in. I mean, we had a low two days ago in the June, in the in the uh, July hogs at 72.50, and today's low is 72.65. Well, you know, with negative with negative news, it should easily be able to make new lows. But keep in mind, this is on a break from uh, 102 and change three or four months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, as bearish as the report is, which was 104% of a year ago, and without export business, um, you know, that puts pressure on the market. The export business changes the dynamics, and that's what caused that rally. Mm -hmm. We've retraced all that rally that the Asian swine flu gave us, but the Asian swine flu is a real deal. There was liquidation in China. They're going to need protein from somebody. If they don't buy it from us, then the people that they that buy it from to replace the excess that they sell will have to buy it from us. So, uh, you know, one way or another, it'll get shipped or transshipped. It's whether it's going directly or indirectly. It, it should lift all votes in the world market mm. for proteins, particularly for pork. I was listening to Bloomberg early this morning about this G20 meeting, and they're talking about the grains and the farmers and all this stuff. And what is this? What's the situation as far as uh, this money that comes in from the tariffs? Where does that go, Rich? Well, it goes into the you know the money that goes is taxes. You know, tariffs are are basically taxes. It goes into the general funds and then gets paid out in the budget. So it goes to the general funds of the of the government, and then the government, like the most recently, they passed a bill supporting a disaster relief bill. And part of that disaster relief bill has to do with agriculture, and so part of it will go back into the ag economy. Some of it's going to go into the economies in uh, you know, where they've suffered uh, hurricane damage in the last year. But it, it goes into the general funds, and then Congress, you know, they're the allocators of the funds, decide where it's to be spent. But believe me, they have no problem figuring out where to spend money. They're really yeah. good at that. <laughs> Rich, uh, you're a farmer. Is this affecting you? Well, yeah. Well, the prices uh, are of soybeans. You know, the, the anticipation had been that that we would be able to sell a decent amount of beans to China. And now with the trade dispute going on, China isn't buying soybeans from us. They're buying them from South America. And South America, once they get sold out, then the world has to come to us eventually. I mean, eventually, you know, it comes to us. But, yeah, it is affecting the price of beans. The price of corn it, it was not affected, A, because they don't buy very much corn from us, and B, because of the weather and, and the amount of acres that got planted. <clears throat> So corn prices have gone dramatically higher, and w while we have some decent weather, growing weather coming on, people are going to be focused on the GDU's growing degree, uh, degree, growing uh, degree units, uh, heat units for the weather, and if we after the you know we've got a long weekend coming up with the Fourth of July, and and after that weekend, if there's another negative weather report, you know, you could that could be the thing that pushes the corn into the next uh, lake higher, which, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm friendly to, but you still have to trade what you see. And the best example of that is, is the hogs, because we know that China had a problem with their hogs. We know how many hogs they've liquidated, which is more than the whole hog population in the United States. It's a huge amount. And the market's gone, you know, straight back down and retest the lows. But that's why I think there's opportunity here today. Were we to close under 7250, I would say, hey, that must have been a really bearish report, and it's not already in the market. But mm -hmm. failing to take that out and holding here today, I think uh, there's a highly probable rally in the offering just in short covering alone 
and not to mention if if they were able to get something together, which I sincerely doubt that the president or Xi has the wiggle room to negotiate because they have to please their bases. And, you know, while it's a political voting base for Trump, it's a Politburo for Xi, and he has a lot of rivals that would just assume that they were going to be the next premier, not him. So he has to toe the line. If he were to lose face or look too weak, it would be a very negative situation. Rich, is there a so possibility? They, I don't is there a possibility that we've seen the top in corn and beans and wheat for the year? If we had if we had perfect growing conditions, uh, that could be a possibility on, on beans. I do not believe that to be the case on corn because, as I said, you know, the numbers for this report today are as of June 1, and we had, you know, 10 days, almost two weeks of heavy rains and stuff that really inhibited planting. My own farm in South Dakota, our percentage is 15 percent, 20 percent. It just, wow. it just it was one of the, it was one, yeah, but that's, that's way, you know, but even five or 10 percent, and you go state by state, I went through the state by state with a, a friend of mine yesterday, and the only reason he had the data is because he participated in the survey. It was, now granted, it was the survey of only about 10 percent of the acreage, but it was a real life survey, which is the number kind of numbers we'll get in August. Well, it was almost a 10% cut, and 10% of 90 million acres would be 9 million acres. Today's reduction will probably be five and a half to six million acres. And, you know, if you add another couple million acres, it's, it becomes a big deal. And the corn, the main halfway back is 572 and a half. I suspect we'll get something well over $5 and probably in the 550s. Um, any, any way you cut it, because you have a certain amount of feed demand, you've got 104% of hogs, so you have more hogs. Poultry stays the same. you got Rich. a commercial here. We'll come back in a second. I'll be here. Yeah, stay with us. I'm, someone's asking a question about options. We'll be right back, folks, with Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, self African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're chatting with Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management about the crop report today. Rich, we have a question from one of our listeners and that is about the uh, situation in the option market would it be a good strategy to buy a, uh, a call option into this report or do you have a feeling on that well that would uh, definitely be one way to do it but uh, the pre the volatility premium implied volatility always goes up just prior to report and as soon as the report comes out the implied volatility will start to drift lower. It'll drift two to three percent lower in the next day. Mm -hmm. If the if you're right, the market goes your way. It'll it'll still make sense. The the ones that I would be looking at if I was looking at options, I'd be I'd be looking at the short dated options, which are options on the December futures that are, are you know if you buy an option today for the for the September. Well, the the real action is in the December, and so they have what's called short dated options, and those would be the ones I would buy. But I mean, that'd be a limited that'd be a way to establish a position with limited risk. You could certainly do that, but you you know you'd want to uh, limit mm -hmm. the amount of money you're spending. The August, uh, which only has 28 days to expiration. You know, say a 460 cost you 12 cents. They would expire on July 26. The September, so if you go out to September, that's got 56 days. Expires on uh, August 23rd. The four, the 450s are the most popular option. The 460s, the 470s, are pretty popular. Out in September, the the uh, five dollars are going for eight and a half cents. I mean, but it's got to move ten, or more than 10 percent just to be in the money. They will, you know, they will go up. In, but let's let's say I'm right, and they go to 550. You know, you're gonna you're gonna make some decent money. But with options, it's all about how quickly does it move and what is the amplitude of the move. I believe okay. that for the next week or so, it's not going to move that much. Yeah, once okay. the report's out, it's going to wait for the weather. Okay. And then wait you, for the August report. The other part of that question is, do you see that there's a big risk here being long corn into this report? There's a there's a gap down at 420. The 38 percent retracement uh, would I I think would be an ideal entry point. I tend to not trade in front of reports because I don't want to try and out guess what the USDA is going to do. You know, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's a good it, idea. It's too unpredictable. That's for so sure. So I, I tend to not do it that that way. Okay, Rich, I have one other yeah. question. This is this question is for me. You and I have known each other just not quite four to fifty years, but I've never seen anything as crazy as this, this uh, cannon fodder that they're feeding us about zero interest rates. I know it's in other countries, and uh, you know, but I I don't understand it. Why anybody would pay someone? you know, to hold your money. I mean, does that make any economic sense to you? Do you believe it or am I wrong? Or what do you, what's your feeling here? Well, the last time I was on, you know, I, I emphasized that $11 trillion of negative interest rates in the world, which, you know, is beyond belief. And 
I said that you would see, you know, a small percentage of that. Why would I give the money for negative interest rates? I'll put it into gold, you know, because the, the knock against gold is the cost to carry. Well, if I'm getting 3% on my money, that's 3% I'm not getting if I'm on gold. But if I'm getting less than I give a negative interest rate, then gold's a pretty good deal. And, you know, the quarterly reallocation of assets by these huge money managers that are managing billions of dollars, a 4 or 5% shift into gold is a, is a lot. And that's why you've seen the biggest move in gold since uh, 2016 in the month of June. And I believe that that asset allocation will continue as, you know, I mean, that's the way the big money managers work. Every quarter they're analyzing where should we reallocate our money for the next quarter. That's a, I mean, 11 trillion, let's say it's only 5% of 11 trillion. That, that, that's still a huge chunk of money to go into gold. And on top of that, you've got the central bank buying. And, you know, you've got international tensions, whether it be in the Iran, um, the China trade. You know, people aren't necessarily that convinced uh, that the dollar is safe because at some point our budget deficit is going to become a concern. Now, when that becomes a market factor and a concern, the dollar will get measurably weaker. But right now, because of the negative interest rates, it's been able to maintain. Yeah, that that part I can that part I can certainly understand. But the negative part is, uh, but you know, when you see what happened yesterday with this, uh, uh, I don't want to get into the politics, but boy, that really shocked me listening to that last night. I can only listen to her about ten or fifteen minutes, but my goodness, the things they were talking about, my gosh, that's like Venezuela. I mean, it's it's not not good. You can't give everything away. Someone's got to pay for this stuff. You know, and no, I suspect there'll be enough people realizing that. There's no such thing as a free lunch, and somebody will be paying for it. You know, the the people they'll be paying for it are the ones that are, you know, went to technical college or or have skills and actually do things and didn't develop a big debt or they've already paid off their debt. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a a message that will fly for very long. I mean, you you've already seen that they backed off on nationalizing uh, healthcare. Mm -hmm. It you know the, all of a sudden you run out of other people's money and that's that that's exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. You run out of yeah. other people's money. It's great while you're giving away other people's money, but eventually mm -hmm. you run out of that. Yeah, uh, Rich, I have a question uh, uh, regarding the coming harvest. Uh, what would happen now if we get a early freeze, or you know, there's a lot of things can happen during the grow growing season, but with the crops going in late, the ones that are in. Doesn't that make them more susceptible to an early freeze? Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, it's, it's frankly, the crops going in as late as they did makes us susceptible to just a regular freeze, a normal freeze. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the benchmark date is usually May 15th, May 20th at the latest, where you want the bulk of your corn in, let's say 80%. You know, mm -hmm. this year, if you look back to those dates, we had way behind. And so while the peak uh, risk for corn is typically the middle of June, that's where the average daily moisture need is the highest. Because it got planted so late, that middle of, uh, middle of July, excuse me, that middle of July might have been pushed out towards the end of July. So while we've got some decent weather forecast now, let's say we come back from the 4th of July, and all of a sudden we've got a, a high-pressure ridge, and we've got heat beating down on us. I mean, here in Minnesota today, we're going to have some you know, fairly significant temperatures today and for the next several days. Then there'll probably be a cool off. But then if the next one comes in when the corn is vulnerable in the pollination period, which is likely to be after the first half of July this year because it's been planted late, it, it, this is a historically, this is a historically unusual year. It could be a disaster. Rich, thanks for joining us, my friend. We really appreciate it, and um, hope you're feeling better after your cataract surgery, buddy. <laughs> yeah, there's no problem. See you later. Sounds you bet. Thanks. thanks again. Thanks. Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back. Uh, stocks have sold off a tiny little bit. They're still up on the day, but not much happening here early in the morning. Uh, like we mentioned at the beginning of the week, it does have a, have a negative bias, but after the first two down days, which were minor, we've had two strong days, Wednesday and Thursday. And with a Friday and an up week, it's probably not going to be uh, headed towards the sewer unless there's something coming out of the G20. And, of course, there will be news coming out of that over and over again as we go through the weekend, and that will be reflected on what we see on Monday. Remember, folks, we have a holiday coming up. The 4th of July is going to be on Thursday. So that Thursday and Friday will be, Thursday will be nothing, and Friday will be almost next to nothing because many of the people take that four-day weekend. So uh, that'll be a limited week. So we're really only going to have three days next week, and there's probably going to be extremely volatile. So we want to watch this uh, you know, very, very carefully because all we're seeing now is a bounce back in these stocks and uh, after that triple top that we've looked at, none of the none of the statistics have changed since when we looked at them over the weekend. We're actually uh, we're trading now 14 hand or 29.34. That's uh, 15 handles uh, lower than we were last Friday. And uh, Sunday night we opened, uh, you know, basically uh, unchanged, up about a point, rallied up a little bit, and then was down hard Monday, and then Tuesday down a little bit, and then Wednesday, Thursday we rallied. So. That's still in vogue. Now, whether that's going to continue or not, I don't know. Folks, I have no idea what's happening with these uh, 
talks and stuff, but I'm the last person that they would uh, uh, share any of that information with, and that's with tongue-in-cheek, of course. The last time I was in New Zealand, which was uh, five years ago, they had a big G20 meeting there, and our plane was getting ready to leave, and we were right there with all of the planes from all of the all of the countries. It was really amazing to see them. I mean, we saw Germany, and it was it was just well, there were all of them were there. All the big planes, Japan, you know, it was just it was really France. It was just really cool, and of course Air Force One. But it was uh, it was really neat to see all that. That was in Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, oh my gosh, five years ago, I guess. Anyway, um, let's uh, uh, see you guys uh, to Monday. Okay, may God bless.